On this day in 1915, we remember the 1.5 million Armenian souls lost in the mass slaughter of the early 20th century at the hands of the Ottoman Empire. As a tribute to the memory of the victims of this senseless genocide and as a proud Armenian plastic surgeon, I thought it appropriate to highlight the resilience of the Armenian people by spotlighting one of its greatest pioneers, Dr. Varastad Kazanjian. Now, you may ask, who is this person and what made him so great? In this video, I hope to answer those questions and to honor the sacrifices of our forefathers and those who died needlessly in the first genocide of the modern age. Dr. Varastad Kazanjian was born on March 18, 1879 in the city of Erzangan, located in the heartland of eastern Turkey known as Armenia. As the first Christian nation, Armenia found itself in the clutches of the Ottoman Empire and were frequently subjected to increasingly oppressive decrees handed down by the regime of the Turkish sultans. As an educated segment of the population, Armenians were soon viewed as a threat to their rule. So when the Armenians began to resist the unethical demands placed upon their freedoms, they were then subjected to a series of atrocities and brutal attacks. The pogroms of the late 1890s wiped out entire villages in an effort by the Ottomans to snuff out the Armenian quote-unquote problem. It was then that Kazanjian, along with countless Armenians fleeing certain death, fled to other parts of the world. Kazanjian himself ended up in New York City, as so many did at the time, and eventually made his way to Worcester, Massachusetts. He quickly experienced racial discrimination, isolation, and helplessness, eventually, as with so many other immigrants at that time. Homesickness set in not too long after he arrived. He went to work in a wire mill at 16 years of age and continued to work industriously as did his father before him. But he always had a passion for knowledge and attended night school while going to work, learning English, chemistry, and other subjects. As he turned 21, Kazanjian contemplated his future career as a mechanical engineer, but was intrigued by the field of dentistry upon suggestion of a close friend. He, like his father, was used to working with his hands and liked the idea of the security that the dental profession provided. So in 1901, Kazanjian moved to Boston and by 1902 he was accepted at Harvard Dental School after a rigorous evaluation process. By 1905 he had completed his dental degree and opened a practice in Boston. He soon became an assistant professor in prosthetic dentistry at Harvard and was quickly recognized for his ability and aptitude in this field. Kazanjian also contemplated completing training for an MD degree during this time as his practice steadily grew. He wanted to expand his knowledge, of course, but to also offer greater treatment options for his patients. Instead, he became the head of Harvard's prosthetic dentistry department in 1912 and found no additional time to pursue a medical degree. By then, World War I erupted in June of 1914, presenting a new challenge to humanity and a level of destruction the world had never seen. By 1915, the United States had entered the war by establishing the American Ambulance in France. The American contingency was led by Harvard Cushing and by other Americans living in Europe at the time. The Western Front was a grind box of humanity, producing some of the most devastating injuries to soldiers on the front lines. Many of these injuries were jaw and facial wounds, creating unimagined disfigurement. It was quickly becoming evident that the dental department of the American Ambulance was becoming overwhelmed by the sheer nature of these injuries and desperately needed specialized services. During this time, events in our Ottoman Turkey were unfolding with deportations and persecutions of the Armenian people in full swing after April 24th, 1915 when approximately 200 Armenian intellectuals and leaders in Constantinople, later to be named Istanbul, were captured, tortured, and killed. Kazanjian heard of this news and wanted to contribute however he could to the Allied war effort against the Germans and the Turks. And so Kazanjian took the position of chief dental officer of the Harvard unit and shipped off to Kemier, France. As the war raged on, there was no shortage of learning experiences to be had. Kazanjian immediately recognized that there was a failure of establishing roles of the general surgeon and the dental surgeon when it came to facial injuries and noted that the face and jaws became progressively more deformed because of this lack of coordination and delays. Dr. Kazanjian recognized that immobilizing teeth and shattered jaw fragments was key in realigning a normal bite, which eventually led to vastly improved outcomes. The prosthetic appliances he developed for this purpose were creative, with no two being alike. He used intricate moulages to fabricate these appliances and would wire and suspend isolated bone fragments from them. This in turn brought the soft tissues into better harmony. While tending to these injuries, Kazanjian noted the remarkable regenerative ability of facial bones and the importance of 
proper infection control for a successful outcome. These are vital principles which stand today. Kazanjian continued to develop new treatments and devices to help restore normal jaw and soft tissue anatomy, such as bands, headgear, splints, and dentures. He quickly gained attention for his quote-unquote early miracles in plastic surgery that were out of the ordinary, according to the journal kept by one of the surgeons at the hospital. His work was becoming so important that the British War Office officially requested Kazanja stay in the war effort and Harvard Dental School obliged by holding his position during his extended leave of absence. This was all despite the stark reality that Kazanja was never really quote unquote qualified as a surgeon, yet his creativity and effective treatments were hard to ignore. And so it goes that his three month extension treating wounded soldiers in France turned into a three and a half year campaign. He served until the closing of the Harvard unit in 1919 and had achieved the rank of major. King George V commanded him to appear at Buckingham Palace where he received the companion of the most distinguished order of St. Michael and St. George, which was the highest honor the British Empire could bestow upon a person who was not a British subject. Upon his return to America, Kazanjian understood that in order to continue doing the life-changing work he had done during the Great War, he would need to finally obtain that medical degree. He went on to enroll in the third year class of Harvard Medical School in 1919, he was 40 years old at the time. During the same time, Kazanjian was called to Washington, D.C. along with approximately 500 members of the World War I Union of American Veterans of Armenian Birth to petition the official recognition of the Republic of Armenia, which had gained its independence in 1918 after the fall of the Ottoman Empire and having survived a brutal attempt to exterminate the Armenian people. By 1921, Kazanjian finally completed his medical degree. Following graduation from medical school, he opened his private practice in Boston, focusing on facial surgery, surgical prosthetics, and oral surgery. As for his affiliation with Harvard, in 1922, he became professor of clinical oral surgery until 1941, when he became Harvard University's very first professor of plastic surgery. He established the Plastic Clinic at Massachusetts General Hospital, which eventually merged with the Plastic Surgery Service at the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary. What is even more impressive is that Dr. Kazanja had never received formal surgical residency training and had acquired his original techniques through observation and trial and error. But his methods were still innovative and sound, even according to notable colleagues at the time. In his years in practice, Kazanja treated such notables as Captain Frank Hawks, the famed long distance pilot of the 1930s, and Dr. Sigmund Freud. Freud Freud even referred to Kazanjian as the magician in his diaries in 1931. Kazanjian was requested by Freud's physician asked to modify his cumbersome dental prosthetic that had troubled him for so many years. As his legend grew and as his accomplishments received their deserved international attention, Dr. Kazanja slowly closed down his practice and went into retirement in 1965 at the ripe old age of 86. His friend and mentee, Dr. John Marcus Converse, who eventually took the helm at the Institute of Reconstructive and Plastic Surgery at NYU, established the V.H. Kazanjian Visiting Professorship in Plastic Surgery, which remains a prestigious honor today. A similar visiting professorship in his honor was established at the Massachusetts General Hospital in the same plastic surgery clinic where I was once a medical student. Throughout his life, Dr. Kazanja was a humble and industrious man who quietly worked and carried the field of plastic surgery forward as an unconventional giant in the field. The values he exemplified, such as perseverance in the face of adversity, first at the hands of the Ottoman Turks in his childhood and later in the difficulties of making it in America, are really traditional Armenian values. On this April 24th, as we commemorate the lives lost in the Armenian Genocide and as Armenians in the Caucasus continue to be victimized by Turkey and Azerbaijan, let us take the story of Dr. Varastat Kazanjian as a hopeful reminder that no matter where we go in the world, no matter what atrocities we may face, good will always prevail as it has for thousands of years. Thank you for watching.